That song makes me feel so precious. Old story! Ooh. We're gonna get an ultra flashback this time. Is it gonna be Historia's backstory? Yes. So innocent. Oh no. Okay. She's the illegitimate child of race, right? Her mother is a lady of the night, I guess? I guess that explains why Krista is a threat to them. But then why do they need her? It's gotta be a bloodline thing, right? An inherited power. That's my best guess. Because if I'm interpreting what I just saw correctly, she's not important in terms of like royal lineage, official lineage. She's not really an heir. She seems more like a loose end. So there's something more than just the simple fact that she's the, the daughter of, of race. Oof. Something went down. Maybe her mother looking at her is a reminder of things she doesn't want to think about. Oh, what the hell? Ah, uh, <laughs> it's awful. Maybe there are other interpretations of this. Maybe. Maybe she loves her and is just af afraid of her, her power. <laughs> I'm, I'm really trying here. <laughs> what is going on? So something about the attack on Wal Maria made this an urgent matter. Or alerted them to Historia's presence and abilities. This is already a horribly traumatic childhood for Historia. And I have a feeling it's about to get worse. She looks so much like Armin. Maybe... Maybe she loved her and was trying to protect her... From pain. She barely made it. Did you? Really? That's gotta be crazy to hear after all this time where you just think you're worthless. It's like a princess fantasy. But it's not the same as real love, though. Nah, he's broken. You got set up. At least they told them. They could have just let, let it be. <laughs> Man, San is just a, just a mess. Total mess. Can't help but feel a little pity for him. Yeah. <laughs> We're really kicking him while they're down. No love lost for Hanji. Some kind of cycle? Destroy the world, death and rebirth, a cycle. There's something bigger than this world of the walls. Huh, that's a, that's a big development. Alright, that's what I thought. I was guessing that. Whoa, this is really insightful by Hanji. Got it. Okay, that clears a lot up. I feel like that was the biggest information reveal in the show so far. It explains everything about Ymir. It also partially explains Eren's significance in a bigger way. Why he's so essential. He has a lot of different powers, it seems. I don't think we've seen the full extent of it. And one of his functions is the coordinate, which can bring about the end of the world. And so eating him would give people that power. Adding to the fact is what San is, or the other guy said about there being a cycle. And just a very general, vague guess, there are going to be those who want to continue the cycle and those who want to end the cycle. And Eren might be a key for for both of those things. So it's a battle over Eren. But then where does Historia fit in? I'm dying right now because I know that it's all there in front of me already. Like, I know that all the details have been dropped 
especially by like any Bertholdt, Reiner, Ymir, but I'd have to go back and watch those episodes. What's the truth? But I'm guessing that this crew is sort of in the same shoes I'm in, where they don't really know, I don't think, what the sides even are, or what's really at stake. So that's got to be super confusing. And I guess the best thing you do is you just try to protect Erwin while you figure it out, which I guess is sort of Erwin's thing, right? Like Erwin probably knows more than I do, but it seems like that is the central point of his plan is just protect Erwin at any cost because you don't want him falling into the wrong hands, which is looking more and more insightful by the minute. <laughs> Do you need to ask Erwin? <laughs> so frank. Whoa, that is crazy. I did not expect that. But I guess at this point, what other choice do you have? You're just an enemy of the state. I did say that I feel like the leadership, the government, overplayed their hand. They pushed Erwin into a corner, and no one puts Erwin in a corner. <laughs> it just shows how little they understand the Survey Corps, and how little they understand and appreciate Erwin. I feel like if he sets his mind to that, he and the scouts will win. Because I doubt there are many people on the other side who can match him. Match him in intensity, wits, inspiration, loyalty from his people. No way. Erwin for king. It's like crabs in a bucket. Very responsible. He's putting a lot of faith in Pixis. <laughs> he says that, but like, it's it's not really. Ooh, Erwin flashback. I'm ready for it. It all started when I was born with these eyebrows. An intelligent titan is conceived when a pure titan, lacking intelligence, consumes another intelligent titan. Right, right, right. It gets consciousness and the titan's powers. Okay. So I guess the question now is just where does that start? Who's the first or who are the first? They're setting him up. Time's running out. They're not just going to lie back and take it. <laughs> wow. That's some trust right there. Even in this critical moment for him, he's thinking about doing the right thing. He's not trying to clear his own name, he's just thinking about the right thing to do. Here we go. Flashback. How convenient. <laughs> Look at him. He's such a little man. いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、いや、い
goal. He recognizes the evil of the status quo. It's not just that he's trying to fight the Titans and do good for humanity. He's known all along where the enemies were. And along those lines, maybe his question to Aaron, when Aaron joined, you know, who do you think the real enemy is or who do you see, is the most he's ever opened up to anybody. That was a very revealing question in hindsight. Perhaps that was him sharing himself with Aaron. Erwin just gets better and better. I mean, even his plans, you know, even his plans to take over are conscientious. The way his mind works, I feel like he filters information correctly. The things he sees don't get perverted into these weird emotional channels of misinterpretation. He puts himself to the side and just thinks what would be the most honorable action I could take. And that's how it seems to me. And then he does it uncompromisingly without weakness. It's incredible. And he's also humble about it. He's like, well, you know, I don't really know or I'm gambling or whatever. He knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah, they're running a propaganda campaign. They really are like just rebels now. They're guerrillas, guerrilla fighters. So that was a lot of information. I've been so conditioned to not expect that that I feel grateful. I'm like, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you for this, these crumbs. <laughs> thank you for these crumbs of information that you're giving me. But no, it was a lot. I don't think I fully can make sense of what Historia's flashback revealed. Hopefully things will come to me as I think more about the show. But there are a couple of things that establishes for sure. One, there's some kind of cycle going on. Two, the Titan eating other Titans reveal is big. That explains a whole lot and also creates a lot of potential for what could happen in the future. Any of the human characters could do this, right? Theoretically. And and there are probably a lot more out there that we don't know about. It seems like the government has has their own titans that are maybe in hiding. And there's the monkey titan, of course, and there's probably more where that came from. It also gives Eren the potential to get new powers, I guess. But I think my favorite exposition belonged to Erwin because I didn't realize how, how connected his whole story was. I didn't even think about where his motivation came from. For some reason, I just thought he was born as this man-shaped kid, perfectly formed with all his ideals already and giant bushy eyebrows. But no, he was an innocent kid who loved his dad and had to see terrible injustices being committed. I feel a lot of pain about the Irwin story, actually, because my gut feeling is that Irwin is actually a really kind, genuine, sweet person and sweet kid. And for him to have experienced that, to have witnessed his his father's death for, you know, the most petty of reasons, it seems, and feeling like he caused it is awful. It's precisely because of that purity that I think he managed to get out of that with a healthy goal and healthy aims and not just total bitterness about everything. And that kind of adds to the tragedy. You know what I mean? He's just so good. I guess the world benefits from, from it, but there's just something really touching about it. The most extreme punishment for, for his curiosity, you know, just simple, pure curiosity. Maybe it's that purity that made him destined to be an enemy of the world. You know, people like that are always going to be a threat. People who are willing to put themselves aside and not be satisfied with people acting out of selfish interests at the expense of others. People who are principled are scary. You know, people who have principles that go beyond sides are scary for people who rely on sides. People who don't fit in neatly are always going to be a threat, a major threat. And also crazy, now you have the scouts just totally on their own, it seems. This was apparent from the moves the government made in the last couple episodes, but now it's gone to an extreme where there's just no going back. Like all the, all the chips are on the table. It really does feel like the scouts against the world, which is crazy, but, but kind of fun. And now to shift tone completely, <laughs> it's time to give special shout outs to those who joined the top tier on Patreon. <laughs> it's hard. This episode weighed, weighed on me heavily. It was rough. There's been a lot of tragedy in this, in this show, but this isn't character death at the hands of mindless monsters. This is human drama and it just gets under my skin. I just feel sad, honestly. This episode, man, it got me. Before the video ends, I gotta give a very special thank you to all my patrons and a special shout out to those who joined the top tier this week. Fried Chicken Deluxe, Fire Squad, and Taylor B. Tyler. Thank you to you. Thank you to all my patrons. Thank you to everybody for watching. I'll see you guys next time when Erwin manages to save the entire world.